Hey everyone, Pat Bellavo here again. It is Saturday, May 22nd. Yes, I did take some time off. <clears throat> A fair amount of days, actually. So, I just wanted to get another video in here to keep uh, keep the content going on this YouTube channel. And um, tonight, I'm just going to do a quick address of something um, that I find quite important, especially when it comes to, um, you know, maintaining a career as a professional musician, not just saxophone player, but um, this isn't really a gig story thing. It's not like that, but um, it's something that I talk about to my students regularly and especially my students um, at Ambrose University here in Calgary. I'm the saxophone teacher there and the jazz band director at Ambrose University. <clears throat> I also, you know, teach improv and theory and stuff as well to those students. So, but one of the things that's not in the curriculum and, uh, but I feel is extremely important to address anyway. And again, this is more so for semi-pro players or pro players or people who are aspiring, aspiring to be semi-pro or pro players. And that's the importance of networking. Um, to me, probably as you go further in your career and get to know your instrument better and you become more doing more professional gigs and stuff like that, that's probably as important as um, the growth that you experience on your chosen instrument is the idea of networking and getting to know people. That's extremely important because this is how you're going to um, maintain as steady work as possible by knowing a lot of people, keeping your options open, as it were. And just to quickly go through how all of this worked for me, I know that um, I mentioned in a previous video about um, jam and, and sitting in etiquette and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of where it started with me. I was invited down to play at a club or two here in town. Now, I've my networking started out locally. So the for me, it's the city of Calgary. We're about 1.3 million people in Southern Alberta in Canada. And, uh, so I started out there and I just in, in the, in the, um, in the community there just to, cause you want to establish, establish yourself as quickly as possible and efficiently as possible within your own community. So I did spend a lot of time and pretty much every weekend that I wasn't involved with anything else, I would come home from university, I would have dinner, I would load my horn in the trunk of my car, and I would probably go to five, four or five different clubs in the course of a night, um, you know, on a Friday night and a Saturday night, and I would just hop between clubs. And uh, if I didn't sit in, that was fine. I would go and listen though, and I'd go and meet people and and talk to them and and that kind of a thing. And you know, I just, and, you know, it was, it was told to me to do that, a couple suggested. It's not something anybody harped on, uh, with me, with any like, um, regularity or anything like that. But, um, I think I kind of just put two and two together and figured that, you know what, if, if nobody knows about me and I'm not being heard, um, then how is this going to work? I mean, I'm going to be the, you know, the greatest saxophone player that my basement has ever heard. And that's not going to, you know, pay the bills and not going to get me working. So, so that's the first thing I did was to, to seek out places where I could, um, sit in, you know, jams, or if there were people that I knew like from university or, or people that I'd met through these, uh, cause I started playing in a semi-pro and pro big band in grade 11 in high school. And, and, you know, some of those people, I were available to me then to, to, to contact and to just kind of pick their brain a little bit about what's, you know, what would you suggest what's going on where, and, and, you know, where can I go to listen or to meet somebody or whatever? So it just kind of branched out from there. And, you know, I, I wanted to take the time to establish myself in the local scene first, and then, you know, try to expand things provincially. So within the province of Alberta and then Western Canada, then all of Canada and, you know, as further out from there as I could, you know, so now I have contacts in various countries around the world, especially in North America, Canada and the U S of course, but a uh, few in Europe and, um, you know, Australia, um, Japan, that kind of a thing. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, you just broaden your network as much as possible. Right. So, um, sitting in was one of the main ways that I did that locally. Now to meet people, and other parts of the country 
or other parts of North America, the main thing I did for that was I went to a lot of jazz camps and jazz workshops. And that was important too, because then I would meet people from different cities uh, or sometimes just within the province of Alberta, sometimes within all of Canada or sometimes even Canada and the U.S. And, you know, you just, you strike up conversations with people and you meet people and you exchange cards and, and keep in touch and that kind of a thing. So, and that's one of the things that got me on those four tours that I did across the U.S. back in the 90s was the fact, and I said this on a, on a previous video that, you know, I met a, a, um, a guy in um, my instrument, instrumental master class at one of the jazz camps and he was doing um, these tours and I asked him, you know, if you have any tours coming up, you can't do, if you need to find somebody, I'd be happy to go. And that's kind of how that went. Right. So it's interesting how you get that spin off of work. And even when I was sitting in places here in, in town, you know, there'd be somebody, not always, it didn't happen all the time, but um, a good handful of times there was somebody in the audience that would come up and, and uh, you know, they would introduce themselves and, they would never know who I am because nobody did. Right. So, and this is the thing they would come up and say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a sax player for two weeks from now or next month or next weekend, even whatever. And, you know, they'd say, are you working? I'm like, yeah, right. I don't know anybody yet. I'm, I, I'm not working. Trust me, I'm free. So, you know, it kind of happened that way. So, and it's important to be able to, to get out and meet people and to, exchange phone numbers and contact information and, and that kind of a thing. Don't be scared to do that because especially with the band leaders in your respective um, town or city, you know, um, get to know who they are. Ask around what the names are of the guys that the bands that are working a lot in whatever genre you're, that you're involved in, whether it's the party bands, the rock bands, the jazz ensembles or jazz bands, whatever polka bands, you know, country bands, whatever, you know, whatever your, your chosen genre that you're existing in, that's a good one. Another thing that I did to expand a little bit more internationally was that I went to, and again, there's, there's money outlay here to do this, but it's all part of your, um, you know, building your career and, um, you know, kind of getting that happening. You know, it's, it's, it's money you're investing in your own business. And some of the things that I did, uh, I'm from the jazz standpoint, uh, mostly for me, is that I went to some of the jazz educator conferences and I would meet some of the people who are in the forefront of whatever their given uh, branch of jazz would be, whether it's, you know, a teaching thing, whether it's um, music publishing, whether it's performing, um, you know, whatever. There's, there's people I just wanted to rub shoulders with um, and talk to and meet. You know, it's, it's not that I have to be absolutely forefront in their mind all the time, but, but there are people whose brains I wanted to pick, right? So <clears throat> I took it upon myself to, to go and do that, which means, you know, getting on a plane, flying to a specific city, you know, uh, booking a hotel and, you know, there's an outlay of cash there, of course. I mean, as a self-employed musician, it is a business, so these are all tax write-offs for you eventually because you're investing in your business, right? So you're investing in yourself. So, and you know, there's a lot of people that I met and higher profile people that I met at those places that I still maintain contact with at least a couple of once or twice a year kind of thing. Even just to send them a message at Christmas time or something and say, Hey, Merry Christmas from me. And, Hope you're doing well, whatever. Maybe we'll see you at the next conference or whatever, you know, so on and so forth. Now, because of the fact that I have four endorsements uh, and I'm involved with companies that uh, that um, are supporting me in that regard, I'm going to the NAM show more often now. With the NAM show, N-A-M-M, which is the National Association of Music Merchandisers. Huge, huge conference, trade show at the Anaheim Convention Center in Anaheim, California, every January. I was just there this past January. I don't know how many people attended, but the last time I went, which was in uh, 2018, January 2018, 99,000 people attended. And that's very much industry-driven. So I think you have to determine, you know, who who you want to hang out with and, and, and 
do the schmooze with and all that, whether it's in a case of going to the Jazz Educators Conference, it's a bit of a different vibe than it would be for NAMM. So, um, and that's why it wouldn't hurt to do both, actually, maybe alternate years or something like that. I went to the Jazz Educators Conferences for, oh God, many, 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 many years in a row. And then I went to NAMM first time in 1999 and... I didn't go back for a lot of years. And then I've been, I think three times now since 1999. So yeah. So I guess, it, I guess the, in, depends on your intent of who you want to network with. Um, the jazz educators is a good thing because I am an educator too. So that that's important. And it's also a chance for me to network and talk about maybe bringing people up to work with my band or, you know, to come in and do clinics you know, um, that kind of a thing. And I, I brought up people like, uh, Bob Mincer, Jeff Jarvis, uh, Paul Wertico, you know, um, uh, from Canada. I just had, um, Joel Gray here from Edmonton. I had Campbell Riga from Vancouver. Um, some of my American friends probably don't know them, but, uh, on the Canadian scene there, those are names that people know. So, um, you know, that's, that's another, that's another way of, of expanding your network that way. And that's more internationally, right? So, and now with, with the internet and email and, uh, Skype and, and, uh, Zoom and Google Hangouts and whatever else, you know, we can maintain contact with people so much easier than say 20, 30 years ago. It's, uh, it's, you know, astounding what we can do now with the technology. So, I guess the moral of the story is as you advance through your, uh, getting your, shall we say, getting your proverbial shit together on your instrument, um, and you start to work more, it's time to build up those, those contacts and build that network. I tell my Ambrose university students this, that while you're in university is the time to go and meet people. I did the same thing when I was in university. Uh, it took me longer to finish my degree because I got busier outside of university. But that's exactly why, because I was networking and meeting people sitting in and getting busier. So I took less and less courses. I also took those two years off to do those tours and a cruise ship and assorted other things. So that's an important thing. And I think the students that are in university or college start doing it now, because then when you graduate, you kind of, you already have, if you have a foot already kind of, kind of entrenched in the local scene, you'll just hit the ground running after you graduate. A lot of my colleagues, you know, and when I went through university, I remember, you know, they didn't do that. And they waited until they graduated and then kind of started sniffing around for work and whatever. You know, and I talked to a few and I got some calls from some that said, hey man, how do you get a gig in this town? And I said, well, you know, you should have been... <laughs> Should have been working at this, you know, while you were in and not waiting till you graduated. Right. So, and that's the way I did it. I started establishing contacts and working at that, doing that and working at networking while I was in university. It's a perfect time to do it. You know, and again, like I say, the timing is good because once you graduate, I was, uh, once I graduated, I was already established in the local scene or fairly established enough that I could build on whatever I had, the foundation that I'd laid. Right. So, um, it was a fairly seamless transition for me. And I think that's an important thing. And I will continue to say that to all my students, especially the university age ones that are looking to be, you know, that want to go into a, a performance and private teaching kind of scenario or whatever. It's time to meet people now before you graduate so that you can hit the ground running after you graduated. So anyway, I just wanted to, like I say, the moral of the story is networking is extremely important, extremely important. You need to know people. We are in the business of collaboration when it comes to music. So we need to collaborate with people. We need to stay in touch with people. Uh, with email nowadays, you can just send a quick message and say, Hey man, how you doing? Um, hope all is well. Just wanted to check in, see how you are and hope things are well in your corner of the universe, wherever you are. Right. So I think that that's something that, and with social media nowadays and stuff, it's so much easier now than when I was doing this, like I say, 20, 30, 35 years ago, whatever it was, you know, it's, it's so much easier to keep in contact. And it, it, you know, it doesn't have to be a long drawn out thing. It's just send a message and say, Hey, you know, you crossed my mind. I was wondering how you're doing. 
hope all is well and, and all that stuff. But nowadays, like on Facebook and stuff, you can follow these people, what they're up to. They'll post gigs and, and how things are going and what they're into. So you can comment on that and just kind of, you know, stay in the forefront of, of their mind every so often just to, so that they remember who you are. And that's important. I mean, the world has gotten smaller, so let's reach out, you know, when we can, you know, and just, because, you know, not only are these people important to me as contacts and network, but they're generally great people too, right? So I want to, I'm, I'm, you know, I've met some people that are a little bit, uh, mm, uh, you know, it's, and that's, and that kind of a thing too. They're not, not the kind of people I'd hang out and drink a beer with, but most of them are. And, and, uh, you know, I maintain contact with them because I genuinely care about how they're doing too, because they're great people. So it's not just about the networking thing, but, you know, I like to surround myself with people who are good people, you know, who are, are great to work with, you know, nice to hang with and that kind of a thing. So, you know, I, I there's a gen, you know, a genuine, you know, caring of how they're doing and stuff like that too. So it's not just about, um, you know, the whole working part of it, but that's of course there, but, but also about, uh, just you know how they're doing and, and hope all is well with them wherever they are. So anyway, it only takes a few minutes. That's all it takes is a few minutes just to say hi, you know, and, uh, I think that goes a long way. And I like to keep this network active because you never know. I might, something might pop into my head and say, you know what, I'd like to bring so-and-so up for, from wherever, to come and guest with my Ambrose University band or whatever. Or, hey, I'm doing a recording. Maybe I can get this guy to come in and be a guest or whatever. Or maybe they'll say, hey, that guy out in Calgary, Pat Belleville, let's get him to play or whatever. That might happen, you know? It's always it's always good just to be in touch with people and to, you know, I don't know how much more I can expand on that, but keep that in mind. Don't underestimate the importance of networking as much as it is practicing. Keep the network active, you know, reach out to people every so often and don't be afraid to exchange business cards with people, you know, to say to somebody, Hey, do you have a card? And then they give you a card and then say a few days later or a week later, you send them a follow-up message on email. Just say, Hey, it was great to meet you. And, you know, I'd like to keep you in my network. And, you know, that's a whole concept behind LinkedIn. This is, I had a LinkedIn thing going even before LinkedIn was LinkedIn, you know? So it's that kind of a thing. So it's just that things like LinkedIn make it a lot easier now. Anyway, I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but you know, I can't overemphasize just how important networking is. So keep that in mind. Okay. And again, like I always say, um, I will post my, uh, my, um, email address down below here. Just push that down arrow then it'll, you'll see it. Uh, it's YouTube at belltones.ca, Y-O-U-T-U-B-E at belltones, B-E-L-L-T-O-N-E-S dot C-A, not dot com. So feel free to send me any comments, questions, or or uh, video topics or anything like that, or just say hi, whatever. Please no spam, because I don't like it. I get so much crap with, I have a bunch of other email addresses. I get so much crap with them. Please don't spam me. Anyway, nobody has so far and that's been great. Thank you for that. But anyway, if, if you have any comments, questions or topics, whatever you want to do, uh, you know, reach out to me, send me a message and you know, we'll talk. Okay. Hope you're having a great night and great isolation and all that stuff that you're not too stir crazy yet. Take care and not sure when I'll see you again, but it'll be soon. Okay. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.